Part four? When they're playing. Part three? Okay. I think we're at part three now or part I, four? I don't know. Three. Okay. I, I brought a pen and paper and I didn't remember to write it down. I like thought I we were on two. But yeah, okay, no, now we're on three. Fine. Okay, we're on three. Okay. Audience participation in the game show? Yeah. The whole play along factor is always key I to any game I, show. Yeah, I think the play along factor is, is, is how you really involve folks. I mean, because with Jeopardy, we're all playing Jeopardy. We're all answering that question. No, we're all questioning the answer. We're, 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 we're all answering, answering the... the we're, we're, yeah. We're questioning the answer on Jeopardy. Yes, yes. We're always answering it that way. Um, so, uh, I mean... Uh, $10,000 Pyramid, all those shows. I mean, you know, you're... You sit there and you're you watching think... watching the timer. You know? And you're sitting here and you're thinking, the clue, the clue, the clue. Right. Dick Clark was always so great on Pyramid of showing up, walking up there, and leaning on the podium if you screwed up in the winner circle, because Dick always had the yes. best possible answer. Yes. There's a clip on YouTube. Vicki Lawrence rips him a new one the minute he walks up yes. after he gives the perfect answer, yep. and she calls him on it. Vicky was always great at calling Dick out. And it was also, yeah, what he was also good at is, is that, yeah, after they would, eh, and they couldn't get it. He would walk up and say one thing, and then... The they get it. Oh, yeah. Exactly. The obvious yeah, thing. Yeah, the obvious. But that's the thing. I mean, when you're under... When, you, when you're under... When you got the hot lights, the TV glare, the camera, etc. Cetera... When you're under pressure, you, you can't... You don't think that way. Yeah. The first thing that always... Uh, the first mental mm -hmm. uh, aspect that always starts to drop in efficiency when you're under pressure is math. Uh -huh. And if it's a number or something numerical or something in, that you have to count or something like that, your, your your brain doesn't work as well under pressure when it's trying to calculate math. So I mean that's why that's why people struggle on the prices right because of all the lights and stuff like that. Exactly, and you're trying to remember numbers, right? Yes. Prices of things, and you're trying to calculate in your head what this is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Real price. You know, going back to Drew Carey being a Drew Carey, I think Drew Carey is a really good price for props. Drew, but but I also think. Drew understood going in that it's it's the contestants that are in the show. I yes. mean, he, he presents them. Yes. He's not trying to do a lot of one-liners, and he's not trying to do his stand-up routine. Drew did that a little bit the first year, though, but it was so weird just trying to – I think Drew was trying to find himself that first year as a host. Right. When he did when, – when he started to sitcom The Drew Carey Show, a lot of that first season was just trying to find themselves and figure out what works oh, yeah. and what doesn't work. Right. And that's what made it so good. Yep. Totally agree. But, I mean, anything's like that. And most of those shows, you know, they start out, you know, you, it takes a little while to kind of gel and, 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 and you really get your niche after, you know, several episodes. I oh, mean, definitely. Uh, first season, we broadcast together, you know. We, oh, we, gosh, we that first year with Jeff. Was, oh, with Jeff, was it 12? Yeah. Oh, God, yeah, that first year, we were, we were trying. We were just trying to. I in. think the first, because we, we had known of each other, but we never met each other. So right. we didn't know each other's styles. Right. Now, Looking back now, though, too, it's simple routine for me. Sure. We do a game. My mic, you're play, you're calling something. My, my microphone's up, and then when you're done, I'll pull it down and go. Sure. And you know, broadcasting as a team, uh, you, there's you, you you learn you have to learn each other about you know when when I pause, that's your break. You know, and, and you 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 have your comment coming in, and then we come out of your comment back into play by play. I mean, there's yes. a there's a timing and chemistry there that you only get from doing it. I mean, you you can't. You have to work together for a while to, to build that that teamwork. I oh, mean, definitely. There's, there's no other way to do it. And and your other shows are the same way. I mean, and you can see it's it's the same way for uh, for big broadcasters, whether it's yeah. CAA. Yeah, look oh, at somebody like Brad Nessler yeah, or Kirk exactly. Herbstreet or it, it takes a while. Keith for the, Jackson probably Keith Jackson, took forever yeah, for that. It takes a it takes a while for that crew to start to chill. Monday Night Football back in the '80s with uh, the early '70s uh, Monday Night Football was like that. Yeah. Uh, Cosell, Meredith, and Cosell, Don Gifford. Yeah, yeah. Cosell, Meredith, Gifford. Those guys. After a season or two, they really started to come together, and that was just that was just a fantastic. Project. Oh, that was great stuff. Yeah, they were great. <coughs> Honestly, believe though too. The show was never the same after Meredith left ABC to go to NBC. The, it was never the same. It was never the same after Cosell left. To me, I mean. He, I mean, Howard Cosell just, I thought he was a fantastic Actually, doctor. I will say this, though, too. I actually do defend the Dennis Miller era of Monday Night Football, the two years he did it. Right. He actually did all right. He was actually smart and knowledgeable. He did okay. He did a playoff, they did a playoff game in New Orleans. And he did really well. He was smart, but he wasn't over-the-top smart. Right. I just, I, 
Dennis Miller did do okay on Monday Night Football. He did. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I'll give him that. But to me, I, I still had this image in my head of him as, you know, doing stand-up or doing the Dennis Miller show. Or Saturday Night Live, etc. Or Saturday et Night Live, you know, yeah. You know, the, the, the smile and wisecracker. Uh, and he just, to me, he never pulled off the professional broadcaster genre. I mean, now when you have a professional football player that retires and goes into broadcasting, I'm still associating him with football. Yeah, exactly. But, but these other guys, you know, just... Yeah, I don't. No, I'm not seeing it. I mean, and I think he did okay for who he is. But I think he, in, in my mind, that. he was just always that guy. He, he, he yeah. was never. He was never the broadcaster that I was looking for. Okay, I get that.